All right, hello and welcome. We're taking a look at my 1977 Pontiac Trans Am that has an LS swap. I purchased this car about six years ago, uh, and the main reason why I wanted to buy it is I wanted a driver quality car, and I'll show you a couple of the paint defects on this car. It had air conditioning with an LS swap that had, was an automatic in order to do things like the hot rod power tour, and then on the other side I have stickers that are for the bandit run. So I would consider this car to be driver quality paint job. It's probably done about 15 years ago. Um, I've owned it for six years. I've put about 11,000 miles on it. <clears throat> uh, really enjoy the car and I'm ready to kind of, you know, move on to something else different. So why do I consider this to be a driver quality car? So I'll post some photos and we'll see if I can get it on the video here too. <clears throat> so down here um, you can see there's some st stress cracks here in the plastic on the nose you can see that the emblem uh, has been removed at some point in time um, my guess is 10 years ago someone was trying to be able to create like a year one recreation um, it does have 17 inch year one wheels on it uh, the rear tires are replaced two years ago the front ones still have 50 percent of the tires still on it uh, pointing out some other kind of small defects. Um, let's see if I can find it here. Right here. It's really hard to tell. There's kind of a little divot in the paint. There's one little teeny tiny kind of, I can't even see it on the camera. Kind of pop in the paint. Let's see if I can get my finger on here. Uh, you really can't see it. Uh, but again, kind of walking around the car. Um, there's some stress cracks here. The spoiler, there's some stress cracks down here in the bumper. Um, the, the glass, it, it's nice. I mean, it does have some small scrapes in it um, over the years. There is one small rock chip right here. Um, it was there when I got the car six years ago. It's so low, I haven't bothered with it because, again, I was looking for a driver quality car. Um, moving along the back side here, um, the tail lights I did uh, two years ago put in the LED panels in them uh, and they can do sequential blinking which I will try to get on the video here um, with the hazards on. Um, walking around the other side here and again there's some other stress cracks in the bumper too. Um, <coughs> One thing I will note over here is, you know, the, the, the fitment on this fender right here is it's pretty tight, <clears throat> operates just fine, opens and closes just fine, no issues at all. So again, I would consider this to be about 7 out of 10 on the paint scale. Uh, I can tell you that at some point in time it was color sanded. This last year I had a multi-phase uh, buff and polish done on it with two coats of that new ceramic coating stuff, which really made the paint pop. So again, remember, driver quality car right this is not some eighty hundred thousand dollar car that you're, you're looking at right the price i'm looking for is pretty reasonable so let's take a look on the inside um let's see if i can do this with the sun so let's take a look at the the gauges here so the the gauges that are in here are the factor original the speedometer has a special box under the hood which i'll show in a little bit um, the, the clock still works. All the gauges work correctly in this car. There's an aftermarket radio. The 8-track is not hooked up. I have PHS documentation that I will include with it um, that does prove the car was a WS6 car and it was born black on black. Uh, there's the glove box. The release for the trunk works correctly and you can see the computer for the LS1 is in there too. Um, it's not under the hood like a lot of those quick jobs you see on you know eBay and elsewhere um, the seat covers have been replaced the carpets been replaced um, you see the uh, dome lights working the headliners new um, you can see here in the back of part there's some six by nines and a subwoofer the subwoofer is hooked up to an amp the amp powers up but the subwoofer does not work which is fine six by nine still produce a lot of good um, power door cards are all new so again the interior is nice and stock on this car it's, it's great car it's got air conditioning it blows really nice and cold um, let's pop the trunk let me just 
push the button here. <clears throat> Check out the, the trunk of the car. Um, in the trunk, I did put some carpet in there and there's some jute underneath there. I will take some um, photos of it. You can see there's a couple pieces of like dynamat type stuff. The wire that you see there is just a, a wire that's powering the tail lights. Um, give me one second here and we'll we'll turn on the uh, hazards. I think they work without. Yep, they work without the key on. So get down low here. You can see out of the sun, and you can see they're nice and bright, help with your safety of the car type thing. Um, I think they're a real nice added feature to the car. So. Let's take a second here and pop the hood. Before I pop the hood, there's the OB2 sensor. You can see there's a little switch that's there too that actually powers the second fan. Uh, we'll talk more about that here in a second. So give me a second here and we'll put the camera down and we will pop the hood. All right, so let's check out the beast under the hood here. So here you have, uh, this is an LS1. This came out of a 2001 Trans Am. Uh, that was a low mileage car that got hit in the rear. Um, some of the things I like to point out is the engine has been regasketed. I know it has an LS6 oil pump, an LS2 timing chain. Um, it's an MS3 uh, cam and uh, rods and springs from Texas Speed. So the, the car has been built up. It's been dyno tuned at about 405 at the rear wheel. It has pace setter headers on it. You know, you, you'll notice here the, the intake. I actually went through and kind of built this thing myself. You might ask why is there header wrap on there? I just did it for like a different visual cue under the car. It's not like the typical cars you see at dealerships and Ebays with LS swaps where they got the cone filter just, you know, sitting in front of the radiator sucking down hot air. Um, we got piece setter headers underneath here. Obviously power steering, power brakes. Here's the box right here that on the back side here that's a speedometer cable. It's within one mile an hour to my, my GPS which is great. Battery is about three years old on this thing. The dual fans are out of the donor car. One is triggered on the temperature of the engine and the other one is triggered on the uh, switch that's in there. Rarely do I ever have to turn the switch on. It usually runs between 165 to 180 degrees, um, which is you know pretty cold compared to the old um, Pontiac 400. Um, this top radiator support here, I had a guy in Ohio make this. These are uh, fasteners from just up the road for me. These are from Ring Brothers. You can see there is a catch can that's here, which again, a lot in the LS swaps, they don't put catch cans on, I don't know why. Down here is a little compressor. You might say, why do you have a compressor? Well, due to the cam that's in this thing, um, I only had about seven pounds of pressure for the brakes. So the brakes are pretty hard at idle. So put in one of those boosters and I got great brakes again. There are a few other custom touches on this engine where I had a custom little plaque here. We'll go where the EGR valve is, you know, put on this little plaque here. Again, occasionally I take this car to car shows and I want to just kind of dress things up again. Again, all the AC is there. The compressor underneath this thing is about three years old. Ice cold air, no issues with, with the air at all. So as you can see here, there's, there's a lot of kind of upgrades. A lot of the wiring is hidden. The shaker is mounted on top of the engine so it actually shakes. Back here you can actually see the um, box that has all the wires for the engine management system. It's all there. They're all fuses. They're all labeled. You know, this is a, it's a very well done swap. But like I said, overall the car really is a driver quality car. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about the car. So the transmission on this I did replace about three years ago with a um, it's called Street and Strip transmission from GM. So it's a direct um, transmission from GM. It's not a rebuilt one. It's a brand new transmission that's meant for these type of swaps. Um, the, the, the shift from one to two, it's a little bit firm because again, it's street and strip. All right, let's talk a little bit about the suspension on this. After I got the car, I had some different springs ordered for it, which are meant for this car 
with that engine swap because that engine is a lot lighter. All right. <clears throat> so right now it probably has a couple inch drop in the front, a couple inch drop in the back. Um, no issues with clearance at all ever. Um, again, that transmission was installed about three years ago. It's got about three to four thousand miles on it. It's a great transmission. It's mounted to a custom built and balanced drive shaft. And then finally out to the rear end. The rear end has um, 373 gears in it. So this thing cruises down the highway at 70 miles an hour at 1200 RPM. It's a great cruiser. Finally, the rear brakes. So typically in 70s, 70s had drum brakes. Right before I purchased it, the owner agreed to have the drum brakes swapped out and actually put discs on for me, which was kind of a great thing for me. So it does have four wheel disc brakes, which is great. Um, finally, I'm trying to think if there's anything else um, that I have kind of missed on this car. Um, I will obviously have a full write-up and I encourage you to go through um, and review that. Again, driver quality car. I've owned this for over 11,000 miles. All the gremlins are out of it. It is ready for the next owner. So, um, thank you so much for listening uh, and feel free to email me any questions that you might have.